All right. Well, today, uh, I'll try and make this a uh, shorty. <clears throat> See how that goes. Um, just a quick little clip I want to do here about straps. Um, and people ask me all the time, you know, the straps I sell on Etsy, uh, what do I do to it? Um, what should I put on it? What kind of treatment should I be, you know, oil or soap or lather or, you know, strop dressing and stuff like that. And, you know, I usually tell people um, same thing all the time. Um, don't do anything to your strop. Um, just rub it with your hands. But when I say that, what I'm talking about is one of these. Um, this is mostly, um, this is like my favorite uh, leather. This is the horse hide with the kind of a velvet finish. I don't know if I can actually pick it up. You can see like the nap. Okay. Um, you don't do anything to this leather ever. You don't put oil, you don't put grease, you don't put nothing, zero. Okay. See what I'm doing here? Rubbing it with my hands. That's it. Over time, it'll pick up a patina, right? Uh, the natural oils that are in your hands will work into the leather. Uh, you'll be able to maintain the nap on the uh, top surface. And um, that's what you want, because that nap is critical to the draw and the action on the blade. Now, <clears throat> what a lot of people don't know, and I, I would write it down and put it somewhere, and you could read it, but I don't think it'll come across, is that horse hide, <clears throat> okay, here's a piece of horse hide. I'm working on some straps today, so I have some projects laying out over there. All right. So, um, basically, horse hide has a tendency to want to cup a little bit. Now, I counter that when I work with the leather, okay? I actually bevel the leather so the center is a little bit higher than the edges, you know, and uh, I work the back a little bit and I work the leather a little bit to help uh, stop it from doing that so much. But you never, yeah, with horse head, you just can't really stop it from doing that. It, it's just what it wanted does. Why? I don't know. Uh, but you can see that this piece, right, I've had a cut for a while. It, it's not really doing that. So my efforts here at the edges, they're actually, uh, they've proven themselves to be successful. But I can tell you that if I leave that alone for a while, eventually you'll get a little bit of a roll up. Now, what will prove that to you is if you have one of these straps, one day you'll look at it and you'll see like little tiny nicks running along here. And that's from the leather coming up. Well, that will happen if you don't do what I'm about to show you. And if it does happen, it's not the end of the world. That's like a beauty of this type of uh, leather. Like I can redress this down. If I hit this uh, with an edge and I put a nick into it, um, I can rework this and eliminate that. Can't do that with a lot of leathers, you know? A piece of bridle over here, wonderful leather, you know? But if I hit that on, a, on an edge, <clears throat> and basically, I'm probably going to want to trim it down to uh, clear that out. But back to the horse hide, which is what this is all about. <clears throat> so you're rubbing it to impart the oils from your hands onto the leather. Oh, yeah, yeah. Another thing. You don't want, like, dirty hands. You know, you don't want to go, you know, tune your engine and then come in and rub your strap. That would be bad. Um, but you don't want to go and wash your hands either because then you're going to strip the oils off. So you need uh, clean hands that have some oil on them. I mean, you know, you figure it out as you go along. You can feel it here. You know, if there's a little bit of slipperiness, then, you know, you got some natural oils going on. That's what you want to do. But anyway, see what I'm doing here? Uh, can you see that? See where my finger's back here? Okay. I'm pulling the leather. Okay, I'm actually cupping it against its natural tendency and I'm coming up a little high come up above this line you want to come up here you want to get in there and you don't want to fold it you don't want to beat up on it you just want to you know, do that this is the other end of the deer you want to do the same thing you want to get up past that line you know 
you want to just put a little bit of reverse top into it. Now this is really good for just about any type of leather, but with horsehide, you're definitely going to see some of that tendency. You know, I do this all the time. I predominantly, I hone, I strop rather, <laughs> with uh, horsehide. Um, let me see if I can get this one out. Show you. Uh, not this one. This one. Okay. Horsehide. No nicks. Had this for years. Okay. No problems. Why are there no nicks? Because every time I go to use it, I run my hands like this, just like this on the leather. Just a little bit of cupping. I do it a few times. Helps get some extra oil onto the edge here. That that edge will dry out on you. You know, I love it. Uh, and if you look at the leather, you can actually kind of pick up the sheen. Uh, that wouldn't have been there if I had shown you the surface straight on view before that. All right, so that's with, you know, um, my standard velvet finish. Horsehead. Now, um, I'm ahead of the curve here. This is a new leather. Well, it's horsehide, so it's not a new leather. And it starts out like this. And after about 16 or 20 treatments, um, alternating layering, um, imparting emollients, I, I kind of stuff the leather manually. I don't do it in a drum and soak it in because you can't do it. You can't do what I'm doing in a drum. It doesn't work. You have to actually force okay, it into the leather. And what you wind up with, see, like this, right, it's kind of stiff. You know, you know, people, when they get a strop, they're like, oh, gee, you know, it has to be broken in. Well, yeah, it's leather. Okay, this, okay, is like noodle. Not noodle, but it's way more flexible. Um, this is like, you know, the leather on that baseball glove you could like, you know, win the World Series with. This is, this is if you felt this, it's like freaking orgasmic. Okay. Um, it's curing right now. It's actually, it's purging some of what I put into it, which is the plan. Uh, when I first finished it, um, I was a little depressed because I wasn't really happy with it day one. The draw was like nuts. It was it reminded me of Latigo, and I hated it. <laughs> and I went outside and I saw my girl Tammy and I said, I hate it. I, I hate the strop. And, <clears throat> so what are you going to do? I said, well, I can't sell a strop I hate. And then I, I talked to some people. See, it's getting better now. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, about uh, the process I'm using here. A couple of saddle makers, actually, is what that boils down to. And um, they explained that, like, my experience there was normal. And I just kind of got to, like, you know, finish the process. They, I'm about halfway. Uh, this is an experimental piece. Got a, it's got this, like, flaw here in the leather. And, couple scars and, and I just figured I'd use this piece because it was destined to be cut to be used as uh, scrap or bolsters or something but I wanted to work with a full length so I could see what it would take it takes like two months to get it yeah maybe maybe six weeks uh, six weeks to eight weeks to get it to this point and now it's gonna like do its thing and take another month maybe I don't know can you see can you see the way it comes up? I mean, the camera's really not good enough, but you can see it from here when I push down on it, I get like a machine. So what I've been doing is um, working with this, and <clears throat> hopefully I'm gonna get it to a point where I'll send it out for a test, and if someone gives me a thumbs up, then I'll make a bunch and put them in my Etsy shop, but um, i tell you right now, it's looking good. First week, two weeks, wasn't happy. Um, a little bit of patience coming up nice. 
Draws good. Not like the other horse hide I do. And it has a heavier draw that um, is reminiscent of Latigo, but it's it's not really hitting the same way. And the effect on the blade is wonderful, so I just gotta work with it. Anyway, my point is even with this leather, it's probably never gonna be prone, okay, to doing this, okay, like the others, because of how loaded with emollients and stuff it is. However, still, even though it is so very, like, broken in, I'm still doing this every time I pick it up, and I think it's a good idea, you know? Um, it's interesting, because when I do this, you can actually see the leather, like, it changes tonality in the center. It's, like, alive. Um, I don't know who I'm going to send this to for a test yet, because it's going to have to be somebody who's uh, not afraid of things like this, you know? Because you can kind of feel that. You, your blade doesn't feel it, but I can feel it with my finger. I know people get skittish, um, so maybe I should make another one. But then it would be like two months out. So I think I'm just going to find somebody who's <clears throat> into living dangerously. It's not dangerous. It doesn't bother your blade. I've strapped on it a million times already. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that's not what it's about. What it's about is treating your horse hide. Keeping the edges down. Just doing it like this. See, I got my finger back here. Just a gentle push up. Okay? You can do it any number of ways. You can just, like that, just give it a cut. Pull the leather through. Just work with it. If you had a baseball glove when you were a kid, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. You get that feel. You know? All right, so, you know, that's it. Um, a couple of people have asked, you know, hey, you know, what does your bench look like? And what does your workshop look like? And, well, it's a mess, you know? Um, here's a bridle I'm working on here. Here's the bolster. Um, and these horse hides will get done this weekend. Got some fire hoses here. This this is that like plastic strop stuff someone's selling on eBay. That couple, two different people. You can see there's two strops here. Um, two different guys sent it to me um, with uh, their thoughts on it. Wanted to know mine. Um, I'm not done with that testing because I don't have that much time to rent it out. But so far, not so good. All right. uh, penguins. Variac, stones, you know, basic bench work. Got some leather working tools out. Uh, got some razors here. Those are test work razors. They're everywhere. There's more back there. Uh, tools, 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 tools. Barbicide, more stuff. Cashew lacquer. Big pile of Wade and Butcher 8.8s. Yeah, it's Maybe about eight of them in there. Um, current test razor, uh, project razor. And there's stones under here, but they're not ready for prime time yet. There's stones everywhere in here right now. Uh, these are the rivets I use uh, for the straps. These are made in USA. Cost more, but I feel good buying them and I feel good putting them on my straps. Um, anyway, so that's it. So treat your leather right, give it a nice roll, you know? And, uh,. Uh, the strap will treat you right. And, and if you wind up getting a little neck in the horse side, like, you know, one I'm selling, just, you know, sand it down a little bit. It's all good. Anyway, that's dropping.